Will Howard. I don't know. Well, I know who Will Howard is. I mean, are, are you kidding me? It's Will Howard. I'm just telling you. Wait before you sit down. I just want to warn you. One of the best-looking quarterbacks oh. in the Big 12 is going to sit down. Oh, the dapper <laughs> Will. Will, uh, Will Howard, how are you, Monty? Nice to meet you. Um, welcome to the Monty Show. Um, uh, we are live. Thanks to our friends at BladeHQ.com. You can pick up that microphone right there. Ooh, all right. Um, dude, people like you. I mean, there's a, there's a, <laughs> your fan base. I'm glad. You're one of the most asked for guys uh, uh, of all of our listeners. And we have a lot of, we have a lot of listeners yeah. that are Kansas State fans, mm -hmm. even though Manhattan, Kansas isn't the biggest metropolitan yeah. area. And anyway, the point is a lot of people want to hear from you, man. So yeah. how's life? How's, how's things at K-State? It's going really well. You know, this, this year for me, obviously has been a lot different than all the years prior, uh, you know, going into this season, actually yeah. being the starter rather than coming in as a backup. Uh, Why does know, that matter? It obviously when you're the backup, you know, you like to say I'm preparing, like I'm the starter, you know, I, I I'm doing everything like I would be playing, but when you really know that it's your team and you know, the offense is going to be tailored to your strengths and everything, you know, your leadership, everything kind of elevates and it, it, it's just, a lot more you play a lot more free so were you a scheme fit guy or and, and that's why we saw this this big uptick or did you train hard did you work hard are you just simply a better quarterback than you were i i think i think it was all confidence for me you know coming in my my freshman year i i went out there and didn't really know what i was doing yet i was still kind of <laughs> feeling my way through things you know covid obviously like kind of messed everything up yeah. i didn't have many reps before that season so I was still kind of floating, just swimming my way through it. And that kind of took a hit to my confidence that year, just the struggles that I had. And, you know, everybody that year told me that um, the, the, the struggles and the tar hard times I went through was going to help me in the future. And at, at, the, at the time, I was like, you know, how, how much can it really help me? This is, wow. you know, this is bad right now. Um, but, you know, in the long run, now looking back at it, like, I, I, I wouldn't trade that time for the world. As, as hard as it was and as, as brutal – but as doesn't that define you though when you exactly. go through stuff like mm -hmm. that? It you does. you either sink or swim, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, but I also think, you know, Coach Klein obviously is is and has impacted you. What is that? What has that been like working with him? Uh, it, it, it's meant the world. Uh, having a guy like him, who's been there, who's been out there and understands not only from a coaching perspective but from a player's perspective being able to just kind of chop it up with him understanding you know because he knows what it's like to be out there you know obviously you can sit there and talk about x's nose all day but you know when, when you're when the the lights are on and, and guys are coming at you like happens a little differently so mm -hmm. having his perspective from that way and then obviously he's just an amazing man and, and a man amazing man of faith and, and he's a big reason why i came to kansas state and a big reason why i stayed mm -hmm. You know, when when I could could have left and could have uh, you know entered the portal or something like that, I, I decided to stay and bet on myself because of guys like him, and because of my teammates. And uh, no, he's done so much, and and it was so cool to see the success that he had as the OC last year. Yeah. And now going into this year, being his second year, uh, he's already got a year under his belt. I'm I'm really excited to see what he's able to do and what we're able to do as an offense. Well, is it is it coach or is it the fact that Cooper Beebe's really good at playing football? And that he's helps. protecting you. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, that that helps. There's Cooper Beebe is one of the best players in, in the country, I, I believe, and definitely in the conference. And not only him, but you know our whole offensive line's coming back. Yeah. You know we got Ben Sinnott returning at tight end. We got Philip Brooks. We got Treshawn Ward. Can DJ you guys Giddens. use the tight end more? Can you in, can you can you integrate? You know, can you integrate that route package into your offense more? Oh yeah, I mean now that. You know, Sinek kind of cemented himself as a, you know, a real receiving threat at tight end, yeah. especially the the second half of last season. Uh, we're definitely trying to get him the ball more and, and trying to do more things to flex him out, put him in different positions to where he can have mismatches, uh, have opportunities to create one on ones for him because. And that dude's 6'4", 250 pounds. Which is, he only had like 31 yourself. catches last year, which is, and, and most of that was in the back half of the year. And yeah. that's why I say, like, I, I feel like all of these things we're talking about, you guys, you had a really good year last year. Mm -hmm. But I feel like there's a lot more. There's a lot more good year. There's a lot more growth in there. there and that's the thing is that, you know, last year went really well for what it was. But I only played, what, six or seven games out of yeah. the year. Um, and, and 
you know, I feel like there's just so much more out there for us. And I, you know, that's a big reason why a lot of those, you know, why Cooper BB stayed, why, why all the whole O line stayed, why Deuce Green stayed. Um, that's yeah. a big reason why everybody came back because there's more out there for us. And we feel like we're just scratching the surface of what we can do. But do you have the, the and you're going to say yes, do you have the quality depth at wide receiver? Because obviously there's some change there. I mean, Keegan coming in from Iowa, I think is going to help mm -hmm. you guys a lot. But I, I mean, do you have the what you need at wide receiver to achieve again? I mean, definitely. I, I obviously losing Malik and Cade hurts, yeah. and those guys are two really really good players. Cade's Cade's an unbelievable cerebral player. I mean, that guy is one of the smartest guys I've ever been around any position in terms of football. Um, but you know, between RJ. Between Phil, Keegan, even Ben, I consider it like a receiver. Yeah. And, and Jaden Jackson. We got some other guys, some young guys that are that are making some splashes and, and that are that'll have some really good fall camps. Um, I think I think we're sitting really good for for our receiver room next year. But do you need to forget about all that success last year? Maybe not forget, but I think it's easy to rest on that. And when you win, it, I, is it easy to let down a little bit? Like how do you how do you push through that? That's always that's always the debate. You know, people say, you know, how do you how do you stay, you know, not get too high, not get too low. Yeah. That's what my coaches always harp on. Our strength coach is really big about that. Staying neutral. You know, no matter how good things are going, no matter how bad things are going, you gotta stay neutral. Um, you can never get too high, you never get too low. And you just gotta you just gotta keep putting the work in. And, and if you do that, then things are gonna go well and, and you just gotta never let that get to your head and, and and that's that's a big thing everyone's saying you know we're the hunted now we got the target on yeah. our back but i feel like just us as kansas state we are a team that is an underdog we're we, we're a chip on our shoulder oh there's no doubt about it yeah so that that's what we like to kind of cement ourselves as yeah yeah you guys don't never get the respect you've earned yeah frankly i mean exactly. that's just the reality of it and before i let you go I, I i want to talk about 60 percent completion because i feel like that's a that's a good number I feel like you're better than that. Mm -hmm. I, I, is there, do you see something in your tape that's going to allow you to be a more efficient, effective passer? I mean, definitely. Like I, looking at last year, you know, me and Coach Klein went through it and, you know, he was, we were both saying it should have been at least 65 plus, you know, yeah. and, and that's just in terms of, you know, just missing open receivers, stuff like that, that, that I'm trying, you know, accuracy, my accuracy, I feel like has gotten way better, even you know, obviously from, from the years past to last year, but from last year to this year, I feel like my accuracy, my timing, um, being able to be that guy with and having timing with your receivers yes. makes a big difference. Yes. So I'm looking forward to see how, how, how much better that can get. Well, and the, the number that's impressive, obviously, is you only threw four interceptions. I mean, and I, would, I wouldn't even put all four of those on you, but my, you know, when I look at those 60% numbers, if you get to 65, that people are like, oh, it's only 5%. Mm -hmm. Bro, that's a huge jump. Huge. And if you're completing 65% of your passes, how many passes that you already completed go for three to five, maybe 10 more yards? Yep. Like those, that, that's why I ask about that. Not because 60 is a bad number. Yeah. No, it's, it's a game of inches. And, and every, every little percent, every inch that you can gain matters. And 5% in terms of completion percentage is way more than the average fan understands how much that means like that. Yep. That's a ton. And that uh, makes a huge difference for me. All right. Off the field real quick. Let's ask you're suited and booted. You look, you, mm -hmm. you look spectacular. Yeah. Like, are you a shoe guy? Are you a food guy? Like what's your grind off? the field? Uh, I, I like movies a lot. I like, um, I'm not a big shoe guy. I'm, tr I'm trying to up my up my drip game lately, man. I, <laughs> my receivers have been getting on me. RJ especially, man. He he said he's proud of me. I'm getting there, but I still got a ways to go. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. One movie you've seen that you loved? Ooh, Interstellar. It's my favorite movie of all time. Oh my god! That like yeah, that's unbelievable. I'm looking forward to Oppenheimer. Yes. I'm looking yes. Wow. Yep, yep, my uh, god. Oh, Let's yeah. just call you Jake. Uh, it's <laughs> awesome. Hey, dude, stay healthy. Have appreciate a great year. Yes, really sir. appreciate you coming over. Yeah. No. Thanks for having me on. You bet. There you go. Impressive. Will Howard from K State. Thanks to our friends at BladeHQ.com, the best knives from the best knife makers. And again, I tell you, they built a website to service you. They built a website that's easy to shop. They built a website that's got over 15,000 knives for you to shop from, whether you're a collector or you're a guy that needs a hunting, a fishing. If you're somebody that needs a foldable knife, if you're somebody that has a utility, 
BladeHQ.com's got one for you. If you're somebody that's looking for that one-off collector's piece, BladeHQ.com has you covered. And if you're an outdoorsman and you need gear, you need clothing, you name it, they've got it. BladeHQ.com presents our coverage of Big 12 Football Media Days.